okay, you're going to show you that the vigilant Christian, vigilant, not a Christian in Mario, still has no repentance. He's got no shame over what he's done. Still up to his old stuff he does and all the shenanigans and everything. And he's still, he's still proving himself that he has no spiritual discernment when it comes to false prophets. You know, uh, that goes down there. And you say, why are you still on him? Well, first of all, I'm going to show you some verses proving that, that exposing a false prophets and exposing and warning against evil movements is scriptural. But there he is promoting Ravi Zacharias on his Facebook page. Guy was a false prophet. He hooked up with the Mormons, which, you know, are a cult, essentially. It was down there. Uh, where is it? Again, promoting Ravi Zacharias. He promoted a lot of false prophets on his channel. You know, him crying crocodile tears. You know, he. You see, what happens is he had worldly sorrow. He didn't have godly sorrow. He had the sorrow of the world, and and he's just crying all his crocodile tears. But he's not actually repenting. He's just, you know, he's he's just upset that he got caught in all those sins he got caught in last year. Uh, where he openly admits he's had sodomite thoughts too. By the way, where is it? More stuff down there. Uh, where is it? You know, angel, angels with wings. Where is that in the Bible? Where do angels have wings? And some of these photos of him, of him, he looks high, by the way. Some of these photos, he just looks very high. And I'm not trying to be mean, he just looks like that. Because, you know, he claims that repented, and here he is not even quoting from the King James, quoting a modern version from, it comes from the Vatican, so, you know, still, I mean, proving he has no discernment. You know. I mean, that, that's really scriptural, making that image like that. Let's go down. Fear mongering about the mark of the beast because he's a post tribber. I did a video refuting him on the post trib rapture, but the post tribber is a uh, post tribber her her heresy is a uh, very very satanic. It makes God into a liar, and it contradicts scores of scripture in the Pauline epistles, and even in the Old Testament, which prove that God does not punish righteous saints with the wicked lost world. You know, Lot is an example of that. But post rivers they, they deny that. They think that God is going to punish righteous saints with the lost world in the time of Jacob's trouble. You know? And a lot of these post rivers actually will be going, uh, and, and when they say, oh, we're going into the time of Jacob's trouble, they're right. A lot of these post rivers will be going into the time of Jacob's trouble because they're not saved. You know, But us who are saved, we're going up. But a lot of these post rivers they're going to go through that time period because they're not saved. Uh, you know, goes down more. And, and of course he lies about being uh, being homeless and everything like that and he got kicked out of rehab and everything you know just just trying to deceive his followers and giving him more money because it's like he gets caught in the sin he cries crocodile tears he goes to rehab he gets supposedly kicked out six months later and then he's back to making videos back to asking for donations you know where's the shame there is none <clears throat> uh Okay, and then I'm going to show some scripture proving that exposing of wicked movements is scriptural. Acts chapter 20, verse 27 to the 31. This is Paul speaking. For I have not shunned to declare unto you the, all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and unto all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, or over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, misread it there, to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For, the, or, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. You know, he just still begging for money. Therefore watch and remember that, that, that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. He's warning people night and day about false prophets and wicked movements. So it is scriptural. But let me show you this video. I uh, brought out, let me just do a full screen. I brought out this video on, uh, where, where is it? It was a, it was hit of him. Uh, it was, it was basically, he was like going on this rant. He did his live stream and he was like just bossing everyone in the live stream, just bossing everyone around. And he didn't realize because he was like, you know, just, just totally exposing himself as an egomaniac. But he didn't realize that the chat is actually a few seconds. Um, it's not the same time as, as his live stream. The chat is like a bit behind. So he was just bossing everyone around and just being like a, a loud jerk to everyone in the live stream. Where is that? Where is that video? Oh, here it is. Let me show you guys this. Oops. And of course he's got this secular 
music playing too, because he's he's into all this secular, contemporary, you know, quote unquote Christian music, trying to Christianize secular stuff. Now, now watch watch the pride just come out of this guy. He just flips out and just just expose just totally exposes himself as a just a, a maniac and just I mean he's not saved. I mean he still has no discernment. This is and this is like supposedly after hit you know this is like during when he got exposed and everything. I mean you know whatever salvation he experienced that was not genuine. You know I'll put it that way. Whatever salvation he he supposedly had back in 2010, it was not real salvation. Because he says that, oh, God was punishing him for for uh, it being exposed. No, he wasn't being punished. He got caught. And he's and he trying to say, oh, God's punishing me. No, there's the difference between getting caught and being punished. Okay? He got caught. He wasn't being punished by God. And if he was being punished by God, he, I mean, like, like JT said, he would have been dropped dead years ago if he, was being, if he was being chastened by God. Because he was doing this stuff for years. You know, while taking your money, too, if you're a follower of him. I'll just skip ahead a little bit further. He just, just, just unleashes an explosion of pride and just, of just, just being a jerk. That's what he is. Just bossing everyone around. Just it unleashes an ex just. I'll put it that way. He unleashes an explosion of it. Just wait a minute. He'll, he'll just go into. This, he'll just unleash an explosion of pride. Watch this. I'm just speeding it up so I can find a spot where he just, just implodes and just gets all prideful. Which he still is. He still has not repented. He still is prideful. He has to go back to the Old Testament, and like find these prophets who are doing all these sins, to try to justify himself. I mean. This is what every lost person does. I, I, I know because I did it when I was lost. So I know. You know, they always like to find, well, Lot was doing incest. You know, uh, David did this. You know, Solomon had was doing polygamy. So therefore, I'm not that bad. You know, instead of just repenting, he wants to try to justify himself. Typical of lost people. They always do that. They'll point out sins that the Old Testament prophets did and say, see, see, they were still, they were still saved. Well, first of all, nobody was saved in the Old Testament because this was before Jesus died on the cross. Second of all, God chastened them. You know, where's the chastening for this guy? There is none. There's no chastening for him because he's not saved. He's a false convert and he's not repentant at all. Still back to making videos, still back to asking for money, you know, not repentant at all. Here it here goes. Now, now, again, just watch the pride and just arrogance come out of this guy. And you want to tell me he's saved? I don't think so.
Yeah, so much for long-suffering. One of the fruits of the Spirit, long-suffering. Yeah, so much for that. It's like, just, just do it yourself, you know? It's like, if you can make moderate disk, you're obviously able to access the computer, just do it yourself. You know, it's like, I mean, what a bunch of pride. I mean, this, this is not um, the fruits of the spirit, first of all, and second of all, I mean, what a bunch, I mean, I'll just put it that way, what a bunch of pride, you know, what a bunch of just arrogance, and what a jerk too, oh, uh, you know. You know, I keep saying that, but it's true. a little bit further because you just because near the end he just unleashes again at least another explosion of just pride and arrogance There we go. Do it yourself. You know, it's like, it's like, is, is he, like, honestly, what a jerk. If when you say, well, you know, you know, have some, you know, have some patience on him. Uh, he's been saved for 10 years. Supposedly been saved for 10 years. Um, there should be a little bit more fruit than, than uh, just this pride and arrogance. You know, I mean, obviously, if he's been saved for, saved for a couple months, you know, yeah, have some, you know, have some mercy on him. But if he, he, if he's claiming to be saved for years and years, you know, you should expect more out of him. You know, and of course, whenever you call him out, he just says, stop judging me. You're a Pharisee. You know, every, every time when he got exposed, when, when people were rebuking him for being in that sin and the perversion, having those sodomite thoughts and sending pornographic images of himself, he just says, stop judging me. You're a Pharisee. You're a Pharisee. You know, you know a Pharisee is someone who is self-righteous and prideful. Okay, Rebuking sin doesn't make you a Pharisee. It makes you a righteous person. You know, Obviously, Christ makes you righteous, but it's part of being a righteous person is you, rebu you rebuke sin. You know? When Christ is living in you and making you righteous, you'll have an aversion to sin. You won't want to try to justify it and say, well, Lot did incest and uh, Solomon did polygamy and, and David you know, did all this other stuff. Therefore, it's okay. And therefore, I'm not that bad. You know, Shows he still has pride issues because he just won't come out and repent and just say, yeah, I'm wrong. I'm a dirty sinner. He just has to, again, justify himself. He has to twist all these scriptures. And my favorite part is in, in his little apology video. He tries to say that, well, the Apostle Paul, he was killing Christians. Um, the Apostle Paul was lost when he was doing that. He wasn't even saved. So, very, very, very weak argument. But, again, whenever you call him out, he'll just be like, stop judging me, stop judging me. He sounds like a lost person when he does this. Because he is lost. You know? I mean, rebuking sin is perfectly righteous. It's not, it doesn't make you a Pharisee. It just makes you a Bible-believing Christian. Because you can rebuke the sin of someone who professes to be saved. You know? That simple. And it's funny because Jesus Christ rebuked sin. The Apostle Paul rebuked sin. So I guess are they Pharisees too? You know, let me let me show you this little blog post I wrote. Blog spot. I'll show you a little blog post I wrote on the Visual and Christian, where I give some really interesting scriptures, um, proving that that rebuking sin is scriptural. Zoom in on this. I write, we are supposed to test the spirits. First John chapter four, verse one to three. We're supposed to try the spirits. Uh, we can judge righteous judgment. That's John seven twenty four. 
John chapter 7, verse 24. We can expect to preach his fruit. That's John chapter 7, verse 15. That, or Matthew chapter 7, sorry. We can expect to preach his fruit. That's a preacher's fruit, a prophet's fruit. Look at their fruits. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 and 20. And we can know a tree by its fruit. Matthew chapter 12, verse 23. We know we know them by their fruits, not by their profession or their you know statement of faith. We know them by their fruits. And it gives the scriptures right here. Paul tells the Corinthian church that fornicators, drunkards, idolaters, railers, and extortioners, or covetous persons, should be cast out of the church. And I quote, First Corinthians chapter or fifth or five verses nine to thirteen. And I wrote by Mario standard, Paul was a self-righteous Pharisee for judging, which is true. You know, was Paul a Pharisee for saying kick out the idolaters, kick out the fornicators? Hmm? Was Paul judging? Because we're supposed to judge. It's scriptural. Wow. <laughs> All right, we don't need to see any more of that, but you know, just you get the point. He's not repentant, and he's just filled with pride. And he, he just unleashes an explosion of just insanity and just pridefulness and just arrogance too. Let me show you some uh, some videos right here, exposing him, some good videos right here. The not vigilant, not a Christian Mario has hit a new low. You know, he proves that he's not shameless or, or proves that he isn't homeless or without shame. I'll put it that way. Uh, he claims, oh, I was homeless. I'm in rehab. I doubt he probably even was in rehab. But, you know, uh, he's disqualified from teaching. That's true. It's true. I mean, the vigilant Christian is not repentant at all. No, not one bit. But here's one video right here. Uh, the vigilant Christian actually, like, makes sodomite innuendos. I'm not even joking. Like you can find a video on this channel, but if he's a Christian, he's a pervert. He's not repentant at all. And I keep saying that, but it's true. I'm trying to make it sure that people get it that he's not repentant. If you're a Mario worshiper on this video, he is not repentant at all. Check this out. See, here's an image, you know, kind of blurred out, so, you know, sorry about that, but, you know, it came up on the screen, but look at this. This is the visual Christian for you. If you're a Mario worshiper, this is the visual Christian for you. You know, sending pictures of himself to somebody else, to, to his friends or whatever, you know. And this is supposedly after, supposedly years after you got saved, where's the sanctification? And, you know, he got, he gets caught and he's like, oh, stop judging me, stop judging me, you know. After he gets exposed, every time he always, every time he gets exposed, he's just like, "Stop judging me," you know. And he got this disgusting thing he did, where he's basically teaching about Jesus Christ with with sodomite innu innuendos, you know. He's not saved. He's not repentant at all. He needs to repent. That's what it comes down to. And by the way, he's a post tribber To add on to that, if he doesn't repent, he will be going into the time of Jacob trouble because he's not saved. So. Yeah, don't be deceived by this little heretic. He's not, I mean, I, I hope he does repent. I hope he does. But he has no godly sorrow for his sins. He's not, you know, repenting and turning to God. He has he had a sorrow of the world. He's just crying crocodile tears and, you know, ch and, and he's probably acting too. Chances are, I mean, let me see if I can find that video actually. Because I was, I was going to see if I can show that. Here it is, Visual Christian Grade A Acting. 
Just check out this acting he does. And even if it, even if it is real, it doesn't mean he's saved. It just it just shows that he's having worldly sorrow. He doesn't need to recommit himself, he needs to get born again, truly born again. That's what he needs to, that's what he needs to do. Again, I said this before, but if he was being chastened by God, he would have been dropped dead years ago. I mean, once you hear about the perverted stuff that he does, and he admits to in the video, uh, if he was truly saved and God was really chasing him, he would have he would have been just dead years ago. God would have just dropped him dead. That's that's it. Because God chastens you, and part of it, if it gets really bad, God will drop you dead. If you're a Christian, if you're getting too far into sin and, and there's no no doesn't doesn't look like you're gonna turn from it, God will drop you dead. You know, part of chasing you, he'll take you home early. So if he was being chastened by God, he would have been dead years ago. So you get the picture, crying crocodile tears, you know, um, making sodomite innuendos, promoting false prophets like Ravi Zacharias, no discernment, no repentance, just full up, filled with pride, you know, just just being arrogant towards his followers, you know, just prideful, arrogant, little, little, little heretic. And then when you call him out, he's like, don't be a Pharisee, you're a Pharisee, you're legalistic. I love that one, you're legalistic. You know, um, calling out sin is not legalism, it's biblical Christianity, which this guy knows nothing about. So don't be deceived by this little heretic. Again, I, I'd like to see him repent, but he's got to—he needs to repent. He's not saved, but I'd like to see it happen, though. I don't—I don't wish anything bad upon him. I just want to see him repent. So don't be deceived. God bless you. Goodbye. Thank you.